Hello and welcome to this video on Katana 5's enhancements to USD workflows. In Katana 5, you are now able to import and export USD lights to and from Katana. In Katana 5, we've adopted the USD Lux lighting schema and increased the export capabilities of the USD material bake node, allowing you to export your lights out of Katana and into other Katana projects or digital content creation packages that also support exporting USD lighting information and are compatible with USD version 2105. In addition to the ability to export lights from Katana, you're also now able to import lights from other projects or DCCs, allowing you to effectively round trip with other departments. We've also created a custom schema, available in our USD plugins repository, that allows you to customise the behaviour of your light data and map light attributes coming in. I already have a scene with light set up that I'll be using for this video. But if you want to experiment with importing and exporting lights within Katana, Katana now ships with a new example project called Exporting USD Assets that contains everything you need to follow the steps within this video. To export our lights, we'll be using a USD Material Bake node. So the first thing that we need to do is create a USD Material Bake node by hitting Tab in the node graph, typing in USD Material Bake, and then dropping it into our node graph. What this node does is look for the differences between its two inputs and then allows you to bake out whatever it finds. This node previously allowed you to export materials from Katana, but as of Katana 5, you can export lights as well. So if we plug our Gather 3 node into the default input of the USD material bake, we have one point sorted, but we also need to create a point for our origin input to connect to. There are two ways that we can do this. The first is to plug our origin output into the node directly above our gaffer 3. In this case, that would be the material assigned for my backdrop. Because the only thing that exists below the material assigned is the gaffer 3, our material bake will only bake out the lights contained within the gaffer 3. However, whilst this does work, it means that your USD material bake will be looking through your entire scene graph to find the differences between your two points. If we enable the view flag on that material bake, we can see that there's no location for our lights to live in. This is because that location doesn't actually exist prior to where our origin is plugged into. This means that when we're ready to bake out our information, we have no location to set in the parameters tab, so the material bake has no choice but to read through the entire scene to find any differences. This can slow things down when working on heavier scenes. It also means that if you create any more nodes under that gaffer 3, you run the risk of additional information being baked out. The second and more efficient way of doing this is to create a location and have your USD material bake point to that instead. This basically means that your USD material bake node only has to look in one place instead of the entire scene graph when determining what does and doesn't need to be exported. One way that we can create a location is to hit tab in the node graph, type in location create and then drop it in. To get it into our node graph tree, we want to hit tab again type in merge and then drop a merge into our scene above the gaffer 3 node. Next, we're going to drag a connection between our location create and our merge so it's a part of our node graph. We still need to set the location within that location create node so enable the edit flag on the node so we can edit the node's parameters. Here, all we need to do is middle mouse drag and then drop the light group location that contains our gaffer 3 node from the scene graph into the location's parameter of the location create node. Once the location is set, all we need to do is drag a connection from the merge node into the origin input of our material bake. So, now that we have a location prior to the gaffer 3, we have somewhere for our lights to live that can be picked up by the material bake. This means that we can now specify within the material bake to only bake out any changes within the light's location. If I quickly disable the location create, we can see in the scene graph that there's no specific point containing our lights. If I enable the location create, we can see that there's now a location in the scene graph that our lights can live in. This basically means that our material bake now only has to look in one place for information to bake out, instead of the entire scene graph. Before we can bake out our lights, we need to enable our material bake's edit flag and set a few parameters. First, we need to specify our root location. Because we created a location prior to the gaffer 3, we can specify this location within the node so only changes contained within that location are baked out. 
To do this, middle mouse drag the location of your lights from the scene graph into your root location. Once we have our root location set, we need to set a location for our USD file to be saved to. This can be done within the save to parameter. Once we have a place for the USD file to live, we also need to assign it a name in the looks file name parameter. The other parameters can be left is, but I strongly recommend changing the root name prim to something that reflects what you're baking out. So for this video, we're baking out lights, so I'll be changing this parameter to lights. When we import our USD back into Katana, this root prim name will act as a location in our scene graph. So being on top of naming conventions and knowing what's named what makes life a lot easier when working with complex scenes. Once everything's set, all we need to do is press right and our lights will be written out as a USD file. So now that we have our lights baked out, I'm going to show you how we can use the USD in node to import lights into Katana. For the sake of this video, I'll be importing the lights that we just baked out back into Katana, but the lights don't have to be created and then exported from Katana for them to be imported. For this, all we need to do is create a USD in node and then import our baked USD file into the file name parameter in the parameter menu. Once it's imported, we'll also want to specify a scene graph location where we want our lights to live. Currently, it's going under root world geo, but you can point the location to anywhere in the scene graph that you want. With the location set, if we turn on the view flag for the USD in, and then expand the scene graph, we can see that our lights have been exported out and nothing else, which is exactly what we want. If I want to see my geo with my lights, all I need to do is create a merge node and then create a breakpoint in my node stream before the original Gaffer 3 node and then feed my USD in and the asset into that merge node. Once everything is connected, if I enable the view flag on the merge, I can now see my asset alongside my USD lights. Once our lights are imported, we can actually keep editing them using the inheritance features within the Gaffer 3 node. To edit our imported lights, all we need to do is create a Gaffer 3 node under the merge containing our lights and asset. Once created, enable the edit flag and then click the cog in the parameters window and tick show incoming scene. You also need to assign a location for the Gaffer 3 to inherit from, so middle mouse drag the location from the scene graph into the parameters window. Once you can see the lights that your Gaffer 3 is inheriting from, right click the lights that you want to edit and select adopt for editing. Now you can edit your lights as needed, as well as add additional lights, without impacting the lights that were originally imported. If I quickly switch between the Gaffer 3 that I've been editing and the merge above it, you can see that none of the edits that I've been making in the Gaffer 3 are present in the lights that I've imported. To import or export renderer specific lights, they will need to be listed within USD's shader registry. You can easily check if your lights are listed in the shader registry by opening up the Python tab and then inputting the text shown on screen. As long as you have access to your render delegate, Light types that are supported will be listed within the text that is returned. Any shaders or light types that may be missing will likely be included in your render vendor's upcoming versions for Katana 4.5 and 5.0. This has been a video on the USD workflow improvements that we've brought into Katana. For more information on Katana, including more tutorials as well as the user and reference guides, head over to learn.foundry.com forward slash Katana while additional information on USD will be in the description below. Thanks for watching.